Nina Shang is the co-founder and managing editor of the website China Money Network that tracks investments in technology. She's also the author of Red AI, Victories and Warnings from China's Rise in Artificial Intelligence. So, Nina, uh, we know that you are there in Shanghai to attend this World AI Conference. What are some of the things that you have seen uh, that excite you about the future trends in AI? Right. Actually, for me, um, I've seen a lot of familiar names and logos. I uh, saw a lot of friends there. So in terms of products, you can see most are very familiar uh, computer vision-based, speech recognition-based technology, which is uh, a majority of the AI applications in China. But I also see quite excitingly that there are a lot of new ways of applying AI in different kind of industries. So one of the things I find interesting was uh, I was at a booth. I was able to pretty much self-help myself in a matter of minutes, checking my blood pressure, checking my other health uh, indicators. And I was able to download a healthcare report uh, for my own uh, personal health and also with personal health recommendations that I can you know, go on and uh, pay attention to in terms of dietary exercising, et cetera. So those, those are quite exciting and some of the new things I've seen there. Some people can't wait for the next big thing, um, but AI does seem scary to other people. Um, a lot of attention, Jack Ma and uh, Elon Musk's conversation got a lot of attention there in Shanghai. They have quite different viewpoints on what the future holds. What were your biggest takeaways from that? Right, so I'm on the camp of uh, the more patient AI enthusiast. So I do feel uh, this revolution is going to take decades. We're still at a very, very early stage. Uh, people often say that AI is a solution looking for a problem. So you see that all over the place. People and teams are basically throwing AI on the wall and see which one sticks and which one doesn't. So we're, we're in this initial stage where you know, companies are figuring out how are they going to use this technology and, how, uh, and how, what kind of new products, services they can create out of it. So in 2018, the Gartner um, uh, new technology curve basically put deep learning on the point where it's at the top of inflated expectations. So I think that's kind of telling sign that people are sort of, you know, we have heard about AI for the past three years a lot, but in the future, people are not going to hear perhaps as much, but the revolution will continue, and that's going to continue for decades. So I basically tell people, don't hold your breath for a self-driving car next year, or even in you know, two or three years. It's going to take a lot longer than people expect. That being said, how does China's investment in AI development compare right now to other countries in the world working on the same projects? China is much more ahead in terms of where, are, where they are in terms of funding AI startups, startups. We're seeing the first AI startup in China, MegV, which is the operator of Face++ platform, China's, one of China's largest facial recognition company. They're filing and they have already filed to list in Hong Kong. And we don't really see, you know, in other places or countries where AI-specific companies and startups are going to the public markets. So China is sort of on the curve, of, a little bit ahead of other countries. Um, but we're also seeing, uh, you know, companies are uh, at the same time have seen the VC activity into AI sector slowing down, just pretty much in pace with the overall VC market, that doesn't matter because even, you know, despite a capital venture, despite perhaps even an AI venture, we're still going to see AI technology continue to reshape our technology and economy and our society going forward for the next many, many decades. All right, Nina Shang in Shanghai, thank you so much for joining us.